Hey guys, welcome to the shed. New Year's Eve 2022 in a few hours it's going to be 2023 and I got some exciting stuff coming up on my channel in the new year. Hey, you see that behind me? That's a D'Angelico Excel. No, it is not a John D'Angelico built Excel. It is well, one of the things they build now. But this one's unique. Have you ever seen a D'Angelico Excel before? If you haven't, pause the video and hit the search function on your phone, whatever you're watching me on, D'Angelico Excel, and try to find me one that has a Florentine cutaway. Now there are cutaways, but you will never see a Florentine cutaway like a Gibson ES-175. Do I have a story for you when I do an episode that will be titled The Phony Florentine Cutaway? We got luthiers, we got everybody trying to figure out what happened here and I've got a story about this one. You're going to see what's been done to it to get in the condition it is right now including what I'm going to talk about in this episode which when I got the setup done by Rob at Guitar 48 in Ventura, he showed me a couple little tricks that you can do to make a grimy guitar look a lot better real quick. So we're going to spend this episode talking about exactly that. Now, I have gotten all crazy and got a scale going on here which is what the title is about, that weird number. So, a couple things you're going to need. I got a list uh, behind the camera there. I have a very bad memory, but it, this makes it look like I can remember everything. So, here's your list. And I think I will give you, down in the resources section, the same list. You're going to need some zero, 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 zero grade steel wool. Now, a packet of this 12 is going to cost you about five dollars. And so we're going to use one of these and we're going to break that down into the actual cost. Anyway, the way steel wool works, guys, is it goes up to three and then backs down to zero, double zero, triple zero, and four aught zero. That's what the, what the old men say, four aught. I wouldn't know I'm not old. Anyway, steel wool. You need to have something that you can use as a bib for your guitar because that steel wool is going to produce shavings or bits of metal. So you're going to need something that you can use for a bib for your guitar. You don't want these things living on forever and you're going to need a magnet. Now you can reuse these things so we won't include that in the price of things. I am going to use a wipe all rag, W-Y-P-A-L-L, -L, number 80. These things are lintless and they have pretty much taken the place of rags. One of these costs 17 cents. <laughs> Make note of that. Wipe all number 80, lintless. You're going to love this. If you use your steel wool and your magnet and your bib, this will help you out. And then we're going to apply two products. One is going to go on the fingerboard. It is Dunlop fingerboard number 02. It is a conditioner for fingerboards. Not a conditioner for finished fingerboards, but unfinished fingerboards. We're going to watch this stuff and see what it does to a dried out fingerboard that has the fret sticking out of the end. And then finally, we're going to use some Martin polish and cleanser polish and cleanser. So what I've done is I've weighed these uh, products out. I know the cost and we're going to use the products on this guitar. I think you've seen an episode called Election Day Special. I bought a couple of guitars on the day I filed uh, for my election papers for uh, the school board election, which by the way I'm 
on the school board again for another term. But uh, this thing has been around for a long time. It was in a storage unit. It's grimy. It's got years of play. And this is going to be our subject. Now, what is it? It says silver tone. Well, it was made by K, and it has a squarish neck, or a V-neck, excuse me, uh, which tells us late 30s, early 40s. Now, I've told you about a young man that I know named S. Nathaniel Adams. Nathaniel Adams. He's about mid-20s, but he knows more about K and harmony guitars than anybody I know. I'm going to give you a link to his site down below. I sent him a picture of this, the headstock. Immediately he tells me, early 40s, come from the time when Sears was changing brands from Supertone, and he could go on and on and on. Anyway, again, I'm going to give you a link to his site down below in the resources section. You're going to want to check this guy out. Now, was he right? Well, I looked inside of this guitar with my handy light and magnifying glass and found a rectangular block that said Made in USA and S50, which means it was made in 1950. Anyway, Butterbean tuners. We'll have a closer look, but you can you can hear this thing has cracks the back of it is coming off it's going to need a lot of work it's got splits right here we're going to have to uh, splint those up and do some things with that but the main part of this episode is we're going to pull the strings off and we are going to make this thing look a lot better real quick so let's hit the bench Okay guys, you're going to hear some noise going on in the background. There's some rain on the roof and a heater going on in the background. But here it is, very distinctive headstock pattern. Very skinny tuners, no escutcheons. Tuners aren't bent, but the neck comes to a distinct V. This is old. The back of it is loose. Um, a few cracks starting to develop right there original pick guard but uh, running crack right there there's one over here that's been um, had a had a cleat put on it already but there's a lot to do now the one thing I want to talk to you about before we get going here is I've talked to you about in that episode about catalog guitars baby boomer catalog guitars um, link right up there right about now about these student instruments that had a very thin fingerboard that sat right on the deck of the uh, top of the guitar. Now, you can tell that the action on this is very high. I can put almost a uh, baby chick flick teal pointer finger in there. Um, and I think part of that is is because this is squatting down here on the top of the uh, guitar. And when you start having things cut loose here, the block that's inside of here starts to rotate and pitch this way which will lend to that sometimes when you take the strings off of these guitars and relax them this whole thing just about strips out so the thing is that there's going to be a lot of work to do here you can see and you can hear that that's loose so when you go around a guitar you can tell where it's loose the front here cracks you can also rattle it and see if there's any of the bracing inside that's bad but anyway let's start off by recognizing that the intonation on these guitars all depends on where the bridge is at and you can see this is not the original bridge you can see the shadow of where the original bridge was so what we're going to do is we're going to pull the pick guard off and we're going to pull the strings off of this it's grimy very grimy Okay, I've talked to you about this um, Stumac guitar workstation before. Very handy. Um, I can put a guitar in it in just about any position and tighten it up. 
There we go. That'll work. Um, always have some little tray like my old Las Vegas, Nevada ashtray. And we can put a magnet in it. And as we pull out our parts, we can put them right inside. Yeah, these are all flathead bolts. And I'll tell you what, it's nice it has the original pit guard, but what ends up happening with these things is they start gassing off or deteriorating. So I wouldn't be leaving that on there after I get this back together. Oh, hey, before I go on, I want to show you a couple cool things. You ever see, uh, I think I introduced this one to you. It's a flashlight that has a couple of different settings. You can um, use it to shine down on stuff. It has a flasher, and it also has a light at the end for looking inside of F-holes. That's very handy. Put that one there, magnetic base. This one from Lee Valley, who has great tools. This one is big. It sits, it's magnetic, and it shines down. These things are very handy. Sit wherever you want. But now that we've got the pit guard, I want you to take a look here. When I pull this off, this has been protecting. This is the finish that's underneath there. Um, and certainly not that grimy mess that we've got. Now we're going to use our handy Milwaukee pistol grip flashlight or flashlight screwdriver. I've shown you this before. Uh, battery operated. I'll give you a link down in the resources section. This is also handy. Um, this will fit anything. It actually looks like Grover stair step tuners like on the D'Angelico XL but um, it fits anything, base tuners or whatever, so you can't beat this. So let me get the tuners or the strings off of this guitar and I'll catch back up with you. Okay, someone had nylon strings on this guitar. It probably tells us a lot about how the neck is going to be, right? I said it wouldn't surprise me if the neck and heel are loose. As soon as we get all the strings off. Okay, before we get rolling here, you can see the finish here underneath the pit guard versus that which was not protected by the pit guard. So use that for reference. So we've got this propped up. I would really rather have this up in the vise but whatever now we've got a couple rags here one of them we can use as a bib I reference this you want to keep the metal and stuff off your sound holes out of things and we're going to take a piece of this steel wool here and we're going to start off by just going over the fret board and the frets and I want you to see how quickly the frets turn shiny just by doing this Let me give you a closer look. Frets that have had steel wool, frets that have not. You can see that it's pretty clear right away. Okay, as we get closer to the bottom of the fretboard near the body, you're going to see the little fragments of steel wool are starting to come off of here. And instead of falling down onto your workbench surface, they're actually going to be up on top of the soundboard or top of your guitar. You can tell a lot by which frets have been used and which ones haven't. These up here are a lot shinier, but basically what you are doing is you are flattening out any mess that's and goo that's on top of the fingerboard and 
kind of polishing your frets a little bit. Now watch what happens here. I've got this magnet, okay? Now when I go up to the top of the guitar, all those pieces of metal are going to collect on my magnet and not come back to haunt you later on on the guitar. Check that out. You would never guess, huh? Anyway, same thing. Just run it down your fingerboard anywhere where you've worked and it will pick up. Look at all that. Anyway, I told you, get some of these tags, um, get whatever information you can and hang it on the headstock while you're working on these things and it will come back to help you later. Okay, the next step is we're going to take some of this Dunlop O2 fingerboard deep conditioner and we're going to take the top off. This comes in a two fluid ounce bottle. And it's got a dauber on it like shoe polish. So you just wet that and you just put this on here like so and go down the fretboard. And what this is doing is it will soak in and all of the dryness and everything will get addressed. It's kind of rehydrating the fretboard. And I like this dauber because it keeps the work right where it's at. I'm trying to yell over the rain that's hitting the top of the shed. But anyway, do that. It doesn't take a whole lot. Give it a coat or two. Let it soak in. Okay, well that fingerboard treatment is soaking in. We're going to take a piece of this wipe all paper rag and cut it off. And we're going to go to work on this headstock with our polish and cleaner here. And this stuff just sprays on. Now, I found out that this stuff does have a little odor to it. You really don't want to go in the house with it. But, look at that. It takes grime off very well. Again, let it soak in a little bit. It doesn't affect the decal at all. And just keep working at it. Give your nut. Look at all that just off the headstock. So you just fold it up. Give it a couple little sprays. Let it soak in a little bit. And of course, while you're doing that, you can go back and give it another coat on the fingerboard of the Dunlop fingerboard treatment. Okay, while the top uh, stuff is soaking in on the headstock and the fingerboard, you can tell between coats that fingerboard is just drinking in that conditioner. But we'll just put this up in the vise and we'll start going to work on the body with the wipe all rag and the Martin polish and cleaner. I mean, again, you'll notice on a guitar that's starting to crack and things, we're, we've got a little stunt we can do to hydrate this and a couple of gadgets to do that. But you'll notice that when you're putting the spray on, the body just wants to suck up any moisture it can get. So don't be shy. Again, it will shock you how this guitar looks after we're done with the simple treatment. And in actuality what it costs so let it drink it up a little bit and then rub it in and get rid of the grind
All right, I'm going to do the sides and the back and then give you a little bit of advice about the tuners while you're here. Then we'll check the neck and make a little list of what we need to do to this thing. But full of grime. This is all pretty easy work. Oh, I want you to notice there's no lint on this. Nothing's snagging up. That's what these wipe all rags are for. They're very, very clean. All right, look at how shiny this is. You would think this was a brand new guitar. Anyway, look at what came off of this guitar. I should not be showing you this. I will probably get my channel shut down by the World Health Organization. I wonder if there's a vaccination for this and if you'll need several boosters. Who knows? Anyway, this all came off of this guitar. So, last thing we're going to do here is... Remember, this is an old guitar with flat head screws on it. So we're just going to go around to each one of the tuner mountings and make sure that they're okay. If you get something that's loose or spinning around here, you're probably going to want to snap a toothpick off and some glue and start with fresh wood. You don't want these things coming apart. And then, of course, you're going to want to make sure the center posts of these that have the gear are all right. Yeah, my old man eyes are getting to me. There we go. Now, I want to tell you about a secret. Don't share this with anyone. I'm sorry about that. Anyway, you'll get over it. Get some therapy. I'm going to tell you about, voila, it's Marvel Mystery Oil. It's waiting in this bottle for you. This stuff is good for your car as well as your guitar. Anyway, check out this bottle. It's got a needle nose scrap apparatus on it. So you don't dump it and glub it all over the place. That's what you call it when you dump out more than you want glub glub but anyway we're just gonna put a little bit here especially where the gear matches up with the tuner peg we'll worry about getting that back on there later we're just gonna spin this around a couple times this one right here could use a little bit of work. It's loose a little bit, but the rest of them are all okay. And once that Marvel Mystery Oil settles in, I mean, come on, if the Beatles did a song about it, it's got to be good stuff. Anyway, 
I'm going to get this out of here. We're going to talk a little bit. Let's go back up here. I think we're going to do an episode about this little problem here. Maybe that's got something to do with the string action, but that'll be in the future. Let's flip this thing over and close this episode out. All right. Ooh, ah. Look at how shiny and new your silver tone guitar, shiny and new, the guitar bow. Isn't it cool when I sing? Not. Okay. So, I'm going to wrap up with something very important. Remember, I told you that I was going to tell you how much this cost did cost. Okay, anyway. You have to have a scale. My scale is friendly. You see, it says hello. So, I go back to where the magic happens in my, I don't know what they call this in Hollywood, but yeah, that's what it is. This is where the magic happens here because before I started I weighed the stuff here and by new math old math at my age any kind of math is good but before I started I weighed these and now after we're done I'm gonna weigh them again and then I'm gonna do some simple percentage work so we started off with the Dunlap Fingerboard O2 Deep Conditioner. Dunlap, you got to love me. And the magic number is 2.38. I'm going to keep you in suspense till we figure out who the Showcase Showdown winner is. And then we had the Martin Polish and Cleaner. It started off at 5.47. And now it is, I have to put it on the scale, 4.25. I'm going to reveal the results in a minute. Okay, guys, can you believe it? You saw this before. Now look at it after. It's like a miracle. Of course, there is a ton of stuff to do this to this guitar, and it's going to start with me filming what's going on here. Can you see that moving? Anyway, now to the science of it all. I told you that I was going to calculate some things with that scale and everything, and guess what? The results are in. In the case of how to clean up a grubby, nasty storage unit slash election day guitar, Dunlop O2 Fingerboard Restore, Martin Guitar Polish and Cleaner, and Rhodes American 0004 000 steel wool. You are the father. I told you, Maury. I told you. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Back to reality. Anyway, what did this cost to clean this thing up and make it look good? Care to guess? You're wrong. Three dollars and seventy-four cents. Three dollars and seventy-four cents. So hey, when you're doing this, start when you get a grubby, nasty guitar, one of these arch tops, start by cleaning it up, taking the inventory on it, what's wrong, what's right, what does it need, get that canvas bag. Remember, I told you how to arrange your pro projects. There's a uh, if I've got a card left, a link to that episode up there. Fill out the tag, put it on there, have a look, and you will be motivated rather than to have a bunch of guitars in your corner getting worse and worse. You are prompted to move along and do something productive. Hey, thanks for supporting my videos. The hit counts are going up. I'm now getting tens and tens of hits in a day. I never would believe it. Anyway, 
Give me a like, give me a subscribe, and I will see you soon, and we'll get into what's going on with the neck on this thing, what's really going on.